Hey there, this is Lucius LaFramboise from ENG Suite. I am a software sales and development engineer here. And today is another video in our QE Suite function series. Today we are going to have a ton of fun. We're going to do everybody's favorite thing, gauge R&Rs. Gauge R&Rs are important, <laughs> but they are a pain. It takes so long to get your operators to actually run the data. It takes so long to get it in the right format. They put it into a spreadsheet, and then you got to copy and paste and manipulate it around. It, it just is no fun. And then only to find that you didn't pass, and you got to redo some stuff. <laughs> We've all been there. Um, so what we're trying to do here at QE, at ENG Suite with QE Suite is just make the data analysis part of your job that much easier so you can focus on fixing the problems that your analysis alerts you to because <laughs> we all know that's what data analysis is, right? Okay, gauge r, &R. So the QE.GRR uh, performs an ANOVA gauge r, &R analysis. Um, operator part interaction is assumed. Um, if it's not significant, the formula is automatically going to reevaluate and won't include an interaction term. Don't worry about that. That's exactly what Minitab does. Um, so you, you'll be very used to what you get out of this. So this has three unique parameters, operators, parts, and measurements, all required. You need to have your operators column, you need to have your parts column, and you need to have the measurements column, okay? In here we have tolerance that is exactly the same as up here in the gauge one. That's the total tolerance spread, um, upper spec minus lower spec. Down here um, we have name, again, important. Um, if you're doing graphs especially, return as object. This is one of the cool ones, just like with the maximum likelihood. We're going to calculate a ton of data really, really fast, and it basically takes up an entire worksheet itself. So storing it into one teeny tiny little cell is kind of fun, kind of cool. Um, just something you've probably never experienced in Excel before. So it's really going to it's gonna blow your mind if you've never seen it before. Hide graph, that'll hide your graph. All right. We spend enough time talking about gauge R&Rs and why they're so much fun. So let's learn how to do them. That way you can start having the fun, right? <laughs> okay, so we've already got our data in a separate, and I'll, I'll show you that right now. So how you format your data when you're using um, gauge r &R is you have an operator column, a part column, and a data column. Operator is going to go one operator at a time, so A, then B, then C. Your parts are going to be in order. So part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. So the f first set, next set, next set after that, okay? And then data is going to be the measurement of each of those. So make sure, you know, operators in order, parts in order, in trial order, and then your data, okay? So something to know about operators and parts, they don't have to be a... They don't have to be names. They can be numbers. You can have operator 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, whatever. Um, for parts, they don't also have to be numbers. So you can have part A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can ha give them each names, Mike, John, um, whatever you want to name them if you want to really have that much fun with it, um, if you're really trying to not do the gauge R&R. &R. But trust me, it's so easy that's not going to happen ever again. Okay. Data does have to be numbers, though, okay? Okay got to be numbers. Your measurements have to be numbers, otherwise we can't calculate anything with them. So tolerance, that's got to be a number. Um, we'll get into that as we go. Okay, then um, now that you know how your data goes, we're going to do equals qe.grr. Move over to data. We are going to select our operators. So I'm having trouble with my scroll lock today. And we're going to go drop down to here. Awesome. We know our parts are going to be right here. Then we know our measurements are going to be here. Our tolerance is our upper spec minus lower spec. We're going to use the same as over here. So we are doing a, I think it was 0.3. Okay. Either way, we're going to use it. And then dimension name. Um, I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to say... You know, uh, let's do 4.9 plus minus 
and then and you would give your own your own um we're not we're not gonna return it as an object, we're not gonna hide the graph, and we're gonna hit enter. Uh oh. Let's see here. What problem did we run into? Ah, I see. My apologies there. I'm supposed to be the expert over here. Our gauge R and R is not the right size. As you can see, our data here, our operators, is in C2 to C47, D3 to D47, E3. Let's go back here and take a look at what we're what we're missing. Okay, it does start in three. That was my fault there. So if we fix that, and bam, look at that. Wow, that was so fast. We have our source, operator, part, repeatability, no interaction. See, the interaction must not have been um, significant, so it recalculated without it because if there is interaction there, it will change some things. So here we go. We have our ANOVA, our degrees of freedom, our um, sum squared, mean squared, our F, our P, down here variance components, so you have your variance component, and you have percent contribution. So for your total gauge R and R, repeatability, reproducibility, operator part to part, and total variation. Then our gauge evaluation. So you probably, I'm sure, know what all these are. And then number of distinct categories down there. Oh, yikes. Yeah, we failed this one. All right, let's take a look at the graph that we generated over here. Awesome. So we have our components of variation bar graph. Totally failed that. Yeah, wow. And our parts... This is the only one that you want to even have any, any variance in um, to make sure you have some distinct categories. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. Then you got results by part with your means. You've got our chart by operator. Man, did they do bad. No, that's not on the operators. That must have been the test method I wrote. <laughs> operators, yeah. Well, operator C had quite, very, quite the variation, huh? Um, X bar chart by operator. Okay, and then part operator interaction. So if you can, if you might be able to tell, I just took this data in Excel and I just drug it down and had it predict a pattern. So as you can see, it used these last two and said, yep, we got a straight line. <laughs> okay, so that is gauge R and R. But let's, let's have a little fun, okay? And let's return it as an object. Bam, all of that information right there. Say we want to get some info out of it, okay? Say we only care about our gauge evaluation, and we want our total gauge R and R, and we want our percent tolerance. Bam! Look at that. All that data shrunk down into one tiny cell, and we can still access it. And that's the beauty of QE Suite. So thank you so much. Have a great day, and please do something awesome.